Good afternoon, sticky lunchers. Dun, 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 dun. Bear with me. Slideshow from the beginning. Vicky, it is great to see you. Thanks very much for being here. Right, we are good. We are live. We're just going to give it a couple of minutes while we wait for the last couple of people to arrive in the room. Victoria wasn't due to be here. It's great to see her. Good to see you, Tim, as always. Thanks for having... Martin, I owe you an apology. I'm looking over here at the list, which is why I'm looking down. I put two and two together and came up with seven. Um, Darren reminded me because I didn't recognise the surname. and I don't think it just didn't add up. So, Martin, thanks very much for being here. Merci, monsieur. Uh, Gareth, thank you very much for being here. Fabian, good to see you. Colin, good to see you. Last couple of people just arriving. Maybe because it's glorious sunshine, everyone's gone out for lunch. Where are we today? Pens at the ready, he says. On a scale of one to ten, how was your weekend? One being for rubbish, ten being phenomenal. Where are we and how are we facing into the week? Got some 10s, got some 9s, nice. Good weekends then, everyone. Claire, great to see you, thanks for being here. Just gonna give it 30 more seconds. Eight, ready for the week, nice. 10 for the weekend, eight for today. Ah, that's still good. Just letting everyone get warmed up, getting in their seats, getting comfortable. Making sure I've got the right pens. I've forgotten which pens run out, so we might find out that in a minute. He says, let's make sure we get everyone set up for success before we dive into this. First of all, mobile phones, hold them high. Let's turn them on. Let's turn the little aeroplane on. Let's zero out the distraction, 100%, but 100% attention on what we're doing here today. Also, making sure you've got a drink available. We want to keep make sure that you're hydrated and keep your brain lubricated to help this learning stick. And finally, as always, you want a fresh page for fresh thinking so that you can take note of those things that you want to remember and remind yourself about so you can reignite that thinking and help keep expanding the ideas and the concepts we're sharing. Still a couple more people just arriving as we're facing into this on their way slowly. What are we covering today? Feedback and giving feedback and, you know, in part also receiving feedback because, you know, if you can't, it's like breathing when we're giving feedback. If you can't breathe in fully, you can't breathe out fully. I hope this makes sense. If you're not able to receive feedback, you're never going to be able to give the feedback. So we're going to be covering that over the next four days. We're going to be looking at the mindset behind feedback and what makes it work. We're going to be looking at the structures that we can peg our conversations on. And we're going to be looking at some foundational and advanced ways of delivering that feedback using that structure and maintaining that mindset. I hope this is going to be useful. Let's do this. Chelsea, good to see you. Lana, thanks for being here. Amazing. So welcome to today's Sticky Learning with me, Nathan Simmons, Senior Leadership Coach and Trainer for MBM, Making Business Matter, the home of Sticky Learning. And the idea of these sessions is to help you be the best version of you in the work that you do, whether that's from home or whether that's returning back to the office, it doesn't matter. We are MBM, Making Business Matter, and the providers of leadership development and soft skills to the grocery and manufacturing industry. Question for all you lovely people right now then. If we're going to be talking about feedback for the next four days, including today, what is it you want to get out of, to, out, out of these sessions? What is it you want to achieve at the end of these four days? Let me know in the question box right now, just as I have another mouthful of tea. What is it you want to get from learning about feedback? Thinking about how you deliver it. Getting others to be honest. Nice. That's good. Definitely going to cover some of that this week for sure. Any more for any more? Be more concise and constructive. Nice. How to take the emotion of it how to take the emotion of it out or keep the emotion in it. Constructive and how to deliver and measure results. Absolutely, Fabian, we can definitely do this. Um, is there a structure that can be used when giving feedback? Yes, there absolutely is. We're gonna cover that. 
amazing. We've got some good stuff in here. And we're going to find, I'm going to answer actually a lot of these as we go through the next four days. Some of it today, um, some of it more over as we go into the rest of the week. So we're definitely looking at this. What is feedback? So we've got some ideas of what you would like to get from these sessions. Phenomenal. Personal, yeah, personal. Personalized, but not emotional. Absolutely. The phrase that I use is it with this when I'm talking to leaders is to personalize your work and not take it personally. Now, some people out there like to look at Picassos, not my thing. Some people like a Rembrandt, you know, or some people uh, Salvador Dali. It's when we look at pieces of work, different things resonate for different reasons. And when we come as a leader, um, as a HR professional or L&D professional, whatever it is, when we are delivering feedback or coaching, we're not always designed to work with all those individuals. At the same time, we have to put all our heart and soul into what we do. If someone doesn't like it, and as long as heart and soul, and we've done everything that we possibly could, hand on heart, that you know is 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 down to them and we still come for the best possible reasons to show up be present and deliver the best possible results for those individuals this is what leading is about so yes but not emotional actually coming back into that it's important as human beings that we are emotional but we don't get lost in the emotions so i use that to kind of underpin that personalize your work don't take it personally Hope this is helping so far. Where are we going? What is feedback? Let me throw this question into all of you right now. What do you think feedback is? I'm going to tell you what we refer to it as. What is what does feedback mean to you? Feely silence. There's a lot of thinking going on. What's happening out there? Helps me get better, avoid making mistakes. Absolutely. A formal way to, sh to say what we think about someone. Yeah, that can be as well. Good. Got some good stuff in there. And again, it comes back to this kind of mindset of how we think about things. You know, is it a way that helps me get better? So when I'm giving feedback to someone else, do they see it as a way that helps them get better? Sharing your perception of an event focused on them or me improving. Absolutely. And it might be an individual event. It might be a certain action or, or choice of behavior um, that has had several moments of time where we've got evidence of that situation. So how we refer to it, Alison um, Cathody, one of the trainers from the team at MBM shared this with me, what do you think it is? Feedback is helping others maximize their potential, raise awareness of strengths, areas for improvements, and identify actions to be taken, okay? So the key thing in here is also understanding when we say this, it is feedback is helping others identify actions to be taken. So it's not me coming over and giving you a list of things to do based on something I may have observed that may not be the truth or the reality and expecting that person to take action. Yes or no, who here likes being told what to do? Yes or no? I know I've asked this question before to some of you previously. Got a couple of, got a no and a yes and a no one does. In truth, when we're in a work environment, no one likes being told what to do unless we are working in very specific jobs, and mostly those are the military. But when we're in um, production or organizations and it's constantly tell, 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 eventually our creativity and our innovative thinking starts to depreciate because we're always waiting for someone else to give us that piece of information. And when we run out of work, we'll stand there waiting until that person turns up to give us more work rather than taking the the initiative to do that thing. Now, the interesting thing when it comes to being told what to do is we don't like being told what to do unless it's us telling us. I hope this makes sense. How many people here when they were 14 
um, and their dad told them to do something, their mum or dad told them to do something, uh, and that they you knew they were right, but you didn't want to let them know they were right. How many people, yes or no, have done this? No, you're a young teenager, mum or dad tells you to do something, you're like, nope, not gonna do it. I'm not gonna do it because you're 40 and I'm 14 and I know better than you. Everyone, yes, oh, you've got lots of, yeah, yeah. And we do this. And then what we do is we go and do it our way and we make it, you know, make an absolute mess. And I'm trying not to swear in this one. We make an absolute mess of it like that. So now I go back and do it the way that my dad told me to do it. And then I spend, you know, half an hour, 45 minutes trying to come up with a story that makes me feel better about the situation and doesn't let my dad know that he was right in the first place. Yes or no? Anyone done this? It's the most childish thing I think we probably do when we're teenagers. So it's understanding one of these principles is we don't like being told what to do. We want to have um, a certain amount of autonomy. We want to have a certain amount of freedom to be creative in the work that we're doing. And we still have boundaries. Yes, we get that. We work inside these spaces. But what we do is we, we want to encourage people to actually step up and do that themselves. And this is how we use feedback to do that. So what is it? is a way for others to take action. It's a way for them to come up with their own ideas to make improvements. But, he says, what are, and this is the problem that we have, is when we start to frame and pigeonhole the feedback that we're given, we're already starting to create the conversation we're gonna have with people. So, question for you all, what different types of feedback are there? Give me all the different labels and titles you can give me of all the different types of feedback that you've heard, that you need, you've been trained on or to give people. Constructive, destructive, good, what else, what have we got? Constructive, good. Destructive, what else? Got a coaching conversation. Informal, in the moment, formal, nice, constructive, critical. You can merge the two. Yeah, absolutely. Mentoring, good. Getting a lot coming in. Too many I can put up here. The real kind of headlines that we have in here is simply good or bad. That's it. They just say that oh, you know, there's good feedback or there's bad feedback. And how many people, we'll get into that in a minute actually, is, is how many people then dress up, say, oh, we're going to give you some coaching, but what is it they're really trying to give to that person? Or what do they end up giving? Rather than actually having a coaching conversation, that person ends up being reprimanded or being told off for something. And I know this happens, I've seen it in lots of different environments from contact centers into production as well. You know, we just go, oh yeah, I need to give you some coaching and you just see the show, oh. and you see the person deflate because they know what's coming. It's gonna be, you made a mistake, you need to change this or else X, Y, and Z. Now that's not feedback. It's a kind of feedback. It's not the feedback that we need to be delivering. Yes or no, anyone seen this, experiencing this? Wish it changed, yes or no? Yes, yeah. How we label this stuff is absolutely critical. So the first thing we want to do is we want to change this, is we want to eliminate the good or bad. If someone is giving you information that is helping you to do a better job, is it good or bad? Yeah, tell me in the question box, is it good or bad? I know this is a trick question, but I want to make sure you're thinking and you're using your fingertips to keep that, keep the, the momentum of the idea going. If someone gives you, it's valuable there, yes. If someone gives you information that helps you to do a better job, it is, it's good, it's valuable. The important thing to understand, you know, it can, it can neither be, it can't be, sorry, neither good or bad. There, there isn't a divide here. All feedback is a gift. Good, you can see that on there. The only difference that we have is how it's delivered.
that all feedback is a gift that's helping you to do a better job. When you understand that, you can then start to differentiate the pieces of information that you want to take on board and you want to take action on. And you can then choose what your response is going to be based on whatever it is you're being delivered. And also with a fair judgment of understanding, has this person been trained in how to deliver feedback? Do they know? Let's comprehend that a little bit and then still be able to extract what I want out of it because I understand it's a gift. I hope this makes sense. I hope this is resonating. The only thing that differentiates when we, um, the, 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 the content of that, the context of that feedback is the way that it's going to be delivered, whether it's constructive, and I'm Mr. C, I know I can see that now, or destructive. Constructive, as it says, is about building people up. Destructive is about taking people out of the knees because you're too busy, you're too rushed, you believe that you could do it better. Or you're applying a label to someone else to deem that um, potentially you can do it better than them. So it's understanding that all feedback is a gift. And then when we start to think about, okay, how much training has this person that maybe has only been in the company three months, uh, is their first leadership role, and they don't know how to give feedback, so they're feeling nervous, they're feeling under pressure, they're not sure how to deliver it. So we start to think about this a little bit differently. Question for you all now, who here has received feedback that they didn't enjoy getting because of the way it was delivered? Yes or no? Yes, 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 good was there still some element of truth in there that actually was valuable to you to do a better job? Yes, and all I wanted to do was get out of there. Absolutely. There is always a nugget in there. But our mindset as a receiver of feedback, because how we receive feedback when we go back into our teams is how they will choose to receive feedback they will learn by our example. So when an individual in your team comes in, they don't know how to deliver feedback and they come at you angry and really aggressive, how you choose to receive that feedback is exactly how they will when you need to go and give them, them feedback. One of my favorite questions when I'm delivering feedback training is, is how do children learn patience? Let me know in the questions box. How do children learn patience? They get old, <laughs> they don't. <laughs> Being taught, good. Now we're getting there. Patience, you teach children patience by how you choose to react in the face of them screaming at you. They learn that through how you then or respond or react to their emotional outbursts when they don't understand how to control them themselves. I hope this is making sense. So it's the same for when we're delivering feedback, how we receive it, regardless of how it's being given to us, is how they will learn to receive it as well. And it's our responsibilities as parents and as leaders to help them develop a skill set where actually they deliver the feedback in a different way where they learn how to breathe in fully so they can breathe out fully, so that when they become a leader, they can get even better results than you did. What makes this happen? The Pygmalion effect. Who's heard of the Pygmalion effect, yes or no? I'll share a link tomorrow um, for this video. I forgot to put it out. No, no, we've got a couple of no's, got a couple of yeses. Good. Okay. In short, it breaks down like this. What you think of people is how you treat them. That's the super condensed version. It was a scientific experiment done with a group of soldiers where they broke down a group. I think it was 150 soldiers. They split them out into their, their, their senior leaders. And they said, these guys are the exceptional ones. These are the average ones. These are the lowest ones. Remember their names, remember their performance, and da 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 da. And as a result of that, um, 
it in, and you saw the results at the end of the experiment, it showed how certain people's in, um, results had changed based on the way that they were spoken to by these senior individuals. I'll share the link for the video, the animation, uh, animated video, video of this short um, tomorrow. But in short, it's what you think of people is how you treat them. So before you even go into a conversation, if I think this is going to be a difficult conversation, now what's that conversation going to become? How am I already caveating that in my head and, and pigeonholing the conversation? But it also applies to the way that we label what it is we're doing. So one is what you think of people is how you treat them. And the moment that you judge someone, you cannot influence them. Let me say that again. The moment that you judge someone, you cannot influence them. So the moment I say this person it is difficult, I'm already saying they're going to be difficult. The words that come out of my mouth will change because of the content of my head. But at the same time, if I'm also applying a label to the conversation that I'm about to have, that this is a difficult conversation, that this is going to be negative feedback, that this is going to be destructive, I'm already applying um, a filter through which I'm actually passing my thoughts that are coming out of my mouth. I hope everyone's seeing this really clearly. So the first thing to understand is, you know, one, what is feedback? It's a way of helping others understand how to make improvements. Two, there is no such thing as bad feedback. All feedback is a gift, okay, in one way, shape or form. The only differentiator we have is whether it's constructed or destructive, and that's just on the way that we deliver it. And then understanding that partly of what's going to actually help us make it constructive is what we think of the individual before we even go into the conversation. Because, you know, the, the words that we choose dictate the actions they'll use. And also thinking about the situation. If I think it's going to be difficult, it will become difficult. How, you know, if I think someone's an idiot, how will I treat them? You know, point blank question. If I think I'm going to go and give feedback to someone in my team and I think they're an idiot, how do I, what do you think, how am I going to treat them? Just making sure you're all paying attention right now for that question. If I think someone is an idiot, how will I treat them? like an idiot exactly and what you think of someone i've even got a card up here from you now what you what you think of uh, of someone isn't actually the truth it's a snapshot of a moment in time perception is reality and that reality isn't necessarily the truth it is that person's version of reality it's what they saw in that moment it's their comprehension based on their level of experience at that point in time doesn't mean that person is an idiot, whether they're receiving it or giving feedback to you. I hope this is useful. I hope this is useful as a starter for 10 for getting to feedback and starting to adjust some of the ways that we look at this. So, conscious time, crikey, it is 24 minutes past one already. What has been useful from this first session about delivering feedback? What have you taken away from today's session? Steely silence. Everyone pondering. While that's just coming up, just to let you know, if you have not registered for tomorrow's session, now is the time to do that. Um, in the chat box, going to be a link for tomorrow's set of sticky learning lunch. Click on there. And make sure that you're registered for tomorrow's session. I'm also starting to put these events on LinkedIn as well. So if you get an invite from me on there, please do click through, stick a thumbs up, share that link with other people in LinkedIn if you think they will benefit from this. It's about you know sharing this content with as many people as possible. The other thing is if you're not connected with me on LinkedIn, connect with me so you can keep up to date with these sorts of things. What do we got? Um, my delivery will change how it's received. Yes, back to basic, be honest on yourself nice and you know what you know it's not even basics I, I wish this stuff was basic i wish coaching skills was taught at school how to ask better questions it's not basic 
you know, it's, it's, it's their fundamental, absolute necessity. Um, all the gifts, sometimes hasn't felt like it, but easier to understand why now was delivered, absolutely. You know, there might have been something for them that they thought you needed to hear, they didn't know how to deliver it, they make a complete mess of it, you feel terrible, and maybe you don't learn from that thing for another five, six, seven years. And, but again, it's just, it's our, people only see from the level of consciousness they're at, but we also only hear from the level of consciousness we're at. Think, treat, how, tell, 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 stifles creativity and initiative. Absolutely, really nice. Ask more questions. How feedback is delivered will impact the, the acceptance, agreed. As it, um, Jeff Birch taught in one of the class, one of these earlier sessions we, we did, you know, a, a change inflicted is a change resisted. So actually, if you get people to buy in and incorporate and add, it will make it much more smooth. Uh, how feedback is delivered with impact acceptance? Yeah, understanding how do you learn patience, supporting others with, with giving feedback. Absolutely. You know, leadership isn't an overnight thing. You know, it takes time. It's building these skills in yourself and others, if we haven't been exposed, it takes time. And it's really about implementing some different stuff, some different concepts. So you've got the things that are on there valuable. Another question before we dive into any questions from me, question for you is how are you going to make sure you do this moving forward? So these things that you said are valuable from this session, how are you going to, excuse me, how are you going to make sure that you actually act on these and keep the momentum going forward? Tell me the ones, what's the one smallest action you're going to take right now to help improve the feedback you're giving based on what I've shared today? And off the back of that, what questions have you got for me right now? change a good example is how well we went into lockdown we understood the why and the intent the goal absolutely give people that clarity when they're going into it why that change is happening so what's the one smallest that smallest action you can take right now that's going to help you embed this understanding already i mean this is only day one so we've got four days of feedback and we're going to start looking at structures a bit more tomorrow let's double check my agenda structure tomorrow the key elements that we want to put in place for phenomenally powerful, um, progressive, intensive feedback that can give you, give you a framework to hang your conversation on that really makes feedback come to life, not just for you, for the recipient. OK. But the first part is always upside, upstairs in the cerebral, how we think and what the, the thought that we're putting into something, how we help that individual to move. No questions. Are there no questions? If you have no questions for me, just put no in the chat box and let me know. No, 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 none for me. Good. Tomorrow we're looking at the structure. So Tim asked that earlier on, you know, have we got structure for it? Yes, we're going to do that tomorrow. Then we're going to start looking over the, the Wednesday and Thursday, how to build it, how to deliver it. So I know that you all have someone that you need to give feedback to. Yes or no, I'm, and I'm pretty sure there is always someone that we need to give feedback to. And I want you to think about that person, whoever that is. It could be one of your kids. It could be one of the team. It could be whoever. So I want you to come tomorrow with that example already in your head. Who do I need to give feedback to? What feedback do I need to give them? And then start building that conversation as we go through the next three days. Everyone good with this as an idea? Yes or no? Ready for the rest of the week? Ready to build up this conversation? Yes, yes. Good. Now they're coming in thick and fast. Good, 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 good. Making sure you're all awake. <laughs> Everyone, look, you've got the link there for tomorrow's session. If you're not registered, now is the time to register for it. Also, last week we looked at... Um, we looked at HBDI, we looked at the leadership model as well. Leadership coaching cards. Now this is also gonna help you to deliver some phenomenal feedback sessions with the leaders in your team, okay? If you have not already got any of your coaching cards yet, the link is gonna be in the chat box in a minute. They're still five pound. This is the leadership deck. I'm very proud of this deck. There's some core questions in here to help you become a phenomenal leader 
in less than 90 questions, okay? So grab your copy now. The other part is, as well, is virtual classrooms. If your business, if your team would benefit from having a conversation with me to take you through some of these skill sets, whether it's feedback, whether it's leadership development, coaching, whatever, there is the link for the virtual classrooms. Now is the time to click on that. So as your business is starting coming back into operation, how can I help you improve your teams to get better results? Click on that link, start a conversation, let's make this all. Oh, I used the cards this week for the for a session with someone very thought for provoking. Chelsea, thank you. You know, this, this means a lot. It's great to hear that these cards are being used. So people have already got them, people have got them on their desks, they are being used. Now is the time to get your set if you haven't. If you want to take this up a level, virtual classroom, let's train some of the people in your teams, in your business, how to coach, how to develop leaders at an exceptional level. And I would love to do that for you, with you, to deliver those results. Everyone have a lovely rest of your day. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow at one o'clock. See you soon.